Okay, the recording is on. We are going to start our class. Thank you, each one, for joining. Let's pray, and um, then we will get started. I think others will uh, join us in the meantime. Okay, Prince, would you like to pray if you're, if you're okay? Yes, yes, sir. Please go. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for once again, Lord. We come before you, Lord. As you're going to learn your word, Lord, uh, urban church planting, Lord, help us to understand, give us good revelation that we can understand, Lord, and help us to uh, work for your kingdom, Lord, that uh, we will know more strategy that for your kingdom, Lord, we can reach to people, Lord. Thank you. I submit all the students to your hand and so Pastor Asis. Thank you and submit all things in your head. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, okay, thank you. Welcome, everybody. So we are continuing um, in our in this class in this course on urban church planting. Uh, we're just talking about different strategies, ways that we could uh, uh, bring the gospel to people, reach people. Uh, as you know, we go about planting or establishing um, a church, a local church, or a ministry in an urban context in a city. Uh, yesterday, um, we started. Uh, let me just share. Um, just going to go ahead and share the, my screen. Okay, so we. You know, we discussed this yesterday. We're talking about how do we identify and develop strategies. Uh, we said we could do it for different age groups. And so we said, okay, let's look at strategies for different age groups. We, we were talking about children yesterday. And I just shared a little bit about, you know, how for us uh, at APC, we had this opportunity to uh, serve children in schools uh, through uh, uh, the program that we called as Catalyst. And uh, so I just shared that with us. Now, similarly, there are many other ministries that um, are reaching uh, children, you know, many different ways that you could think about. There uh, used to be a scripture union that used to go into schools and uh, and, and 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 reach people, uh, students, children, in schools, and so on. And so that that also was a very effective way uh, to reach uh, children. So you could think of those ways. Then we decided to you know move across, move on to think about the youth. And uh, what we said was, uh, you know, uh, we need to think about, you know, what 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 are the uh, where where are the youth, especially in your in where you are in your city or in your region in your area? You know what are the the things that the young people are going about uh, faced with, and then based on that, we can develop strategies to reach youth in those uh, centers, urban centers. And I just want to share some of the things that um, we have done here in Bangalore. Uh, over the years, um, one of the things that we found useful uh, is to have special seminars uh, related to the youth or topics that would be of interest to them. And uh, right from, um, you know, I, I think this goes back to about 2000, uh, 2002 or 2003 in the early days of uh, our church plant year work here in Bangalore, uh, we started having uh, special seminars for, that was targeting the young people, you know, in this age range, uh, 18 to 25. Uh, one of the first seminars that we did, and, you know, and some of these seminars you can keep repeating because you're always having, you know, a, a new generation of young people coming through. So uh, many of these topics you can keep repeating. You know, uh, uh, one of the first seminars we did back then in 2002 or three was uh, on, uh, on, uh, on uh, I forget the exact title, but it had to do with dating and marriage. Uh, because, uh, you know, dating is a 
big thing in, in, at that age, you know, 18, 25, they're, you know, kind of thinking along those lines. And, um, and then, of course, eventually, uh, you know, when they get a little older, they will start thinking about marriage. Um, uh, so, you know, sem- in fact, our very first seminar was on dating and marriage. We had, we had a, uh, it was done as an outreach. So we had it in a nice hotel in the heart of the city. And about 70 youth showed up, you know. It was, for us also, it was quite surprising in those days uh, when we have, uh, as a church, we were still small and we were still young. And in our very first youth seminar to have 70 young people show up was quite uh, interesting. But then from then on, you know, we've repeated some of these kinds of seminars. Um, other other seminars would, uh, you know, we've had people come and talk about uh, 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 some of the young people like uh, a social, I mean, the, the term we would use is social activism. So uh, when uh, we talk, you know, we had people come and talk about uh, uh, what is happening with uh, um, uh, uh, with children being uh, forced into uh, either uh, you know, begging or sex trade, and I mean, not children, but young people be taken and forced into these things. So that was you know one kind of a seminar that we had. We also had another seminar on uh, more on uh, uh, addressing you know delving into the occult, you know, and because people were inquisitive and wondering what's going on in that area. So somebody who could speak on that and uh, different uh, different kinds of seminars that are relevant to this age, 18 to uh, 25, you know, what they are going through uh, uh, and what they are dealing with. And of course, you know, you could have people who are accomplished, who've done things in that, in their lives, you know, come and talk. Uh, um, um, we've had talks on, you know, breaking free from drugs. Uh, how, how do you get out of it? How do you help others come out of it and so on? So uh, these kinds of seminars that engage youth going through this stage, 18 to 25, you know, come and talk about it or, 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 or the effect or the impact of social media. Again, talking about social media, you know, what do you do, what do you not, what not do, you know, how to be careful in that area. So these kind of seminars always uh, engage young people <clears throat> and uh, and of course in these seminars you also bring forth um, uh, biblical truths, uh, biblical understanding on various things so you know in, in the way you're also reaching uh, reaching them uh, so in addition to that some of the things that we did was um, um, you know uh, a coffee what we call as coffee day events and we, we had a very interesting journey in this whole space on doing coffee day events um, I remember way back again this goes back to the early days of 2003 uh, uh, um, there was probably only a few coffee day uh, coffee shops in Bangalore in those days I mean the coffee day uh, brand and uh, we approached one of them. Uh, this was actually the one on uh, MG Road, um, and we asked them, you know, can we use your space for about two hours? We will sing some songs and we will have a talk for some young people, uh, but we will guarantee you business. That means, you know, all the young people who are going to come, uh, we're going, they're going to buy a beverage and a snack at coffee day, and so you know, it was kind of a, a win-win situation. We needed a venue that we could do our things and. They were going to get business, um, and so that you know, we started events in Coffee Day, um, and uh, young people would show up, and sometimes you know, uh, they, they were friends would uh, church young people would invite friends to Coffee Day, and we would sing Christian songs, and then we would have a talk on, you know, just a message, an inspirational message from the Bible or something that's practical, and uh, uh, and so. Uh, you know, a lot of young people started coming and uh, we moved from coffee day to coffee day. We went to the biggest uh, coffee day in Bangalore in those days, uh, which was uh, 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 the corner of Cunningham Road. Uh, there was a, I think it's still there, uh, the coffee day. And we used to have me- uh, monthly coffee day meetings. And a lot of young people just showed up and 
would come. And uh, at one point we hit about 100 young people all crammed into that coffee day, but it was fun. Uh, it was, uh, you know, everybody enjoyed it. And it gave us an opportunity to talk about Jesus and people could invite friends. And, uh, you know, it was fun. But then the numbers became big. It, you know, hit over, crossed 100. And then so we had to move into a, a hall, a kind of a hall space. So we moved into our, the auditorium at St. Joseph's uh, Boys High School. So, but you know, that, that season of doing these coffee day events was was very good. And just to have young people come and they would be very open, very casual. We'll talk, of course, we'll sing Christian songs and preach from the word of God. Uh, so that was an outreach that we did in those days. And... Uh, you know, and then what we did was we we took the same concept to Mangalore when we uh, when we were working in M Mangalore City. Uh, again, there we approached the coffee day uh, in one of the malls, and uh, it was just once a uh, sorry over there in Mangalore it would happen. Uh, what frequency we did it at? I, I forget, you know, uh, but I think at least once a month we would have these coffee talks. And some of these, uh, you know, handouts that we use are available on our church website. So if you go to our abcw.org website and see under resources, you will see some of the talks that we did. We should give handouts and the kind of topics we've addressed in, in these coffee day events. Um, and even in Mangalore, it worked very well. You know, people could invite friends and very informal, casual environment, and we were able to, you know, a lot of people from those coffee day events will eventually end up coming to church. So, uh, you know, if if something like this is permissible in your city or where you are, you could think of doing something like you know, have a very informal space, like a coffee shop, uh, that uh, lets you invite young people to come there, and you know, you rent it for an hour or two hours. And you're guaranteeing them business. That means it's okay. You know, at least thirty people will come, and we'll order some snacks and beverage, uh, so they get that business thirty or forty, or whatever number you would you would have. And then you get to use that space in a very informal way to you know talk to them, you know, talk to the crowd. And of course, there there may be other people who come, and they will also be kind of hearing you know what's going on, and so on. So. That worked very well for us in those days, both in Bangalore and we also did that in Mangalore. So this was again geared towards reaching this age group, you know, uh, college going students. They are between 80 to 18 to 25. And, um, you know, you can reach out to these, these young people through coffee day events and inviting them. Um, another thing that extended uh, from, uh, because when we when we you know in Bangalore when when the, the numbers were big, uh, we moved to an auditorium. So the our young people and they were all gathering inside a our, our auditorium that we used to use for church once a month. Then what we did was we said you know we would take these youth events to college campuses. So something similar to what we were doing with children, we said we will get into college campuses. So we approached colleges. Uh, we used to just call them campus elevates, uh, and uh, you know we uh, asked, you know, spoke to the management, saying, "Would you give us time to speak to your college students? Uh, we will come once a month on an off day. I mean, meaning it's not part. Of, it's not going to affect their college schedule. So usually it'll be like on a Saturday off, um, you know, towards the uh, the last." immediately after their classes. Uh, some colleges accommodated an hour for us, you know, uh, they were kind. Uh, some would give us Saturday right after classes. And uh, and it's okay, you know, we tell them, look, we would speak to the college students, things that would be useful for them. We'd bring professionals and, you know, things, but things from the Bible, things that would be useful for the young people. and. Uh, the colleges that opened up for us in Bangalore, and we would do these campus elevates. So again, we had a team of volunteers who would go to different campuses. Uh, they would sing us a couple of songs, 
and then somebody would speak to them on a topic that would be of interest to them. Uh, and, uh, you know, and the, 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 the nice thing is when we do these campus syllabates, um, you know, there is really not much of an expense for us because we are using the auditorium that belongs to the college. Uh, you know, you'll have about 600 students or sometimes 1,200 students sitting in the auditorium, you know, and uh, we have not spent any money to get them to come or anything. They're there and we get to, you know, speak to them, share things with them. And then we would leave our resources at the back so that as the students are exiting, if they want to take any of our books or materials, um, they would do it if they if they wanted to. So it was a great uh, opportunity. Uh, to reach out to uh, college students, 18 to you know 21, some to 25, uh, through these uh, what we call as campus elevates, and, and everything is done with permission. So we go and get permission from the management, tell them exactly what we're going to talk and what we're going to do, and uh, they you know, they work with us. So several colleges opened up uh, in this way. Um, another thing that we also have done are youth concerts. These are kind of uh, 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 gospel concerts, music concerts that are geared towards the youth. So it would be an evening for two hours where we would advertise a gospel band, a music band. It's basically our worship team, but they're singing. Uh, they're providing, uh, you know, music in a in a contemporary style. Uh, so it's not the traditional church hymns or songs, but it's more uh, Christian songs, but in a very very contemporary way so it's a full-fledged band and uh you know uh, with all you know all the things that go with this this concert uh but, but you know the young people would come the youth would come I just announce it position it somewhere near a college and uh, they would come they would enjoy the music and uh, in some concerts we also announce that there will be the preaching of the gospel and so you know it was all clearly stated that this is a christian concert a christian gospel concert uh, there would be uh, a message preached, there would be people to pray for you, etc. So it was very clear, there was no, uh, uh, you know, we were not doing anything wrong. It's all clear, those who knew it would come, they would bring their friends. And so the, the concerts, the youth concerts were also a way of reaching out to people. And I know we, uh, we did it in Mangalore at least uh, three years, I think for three years, every year we did a concert. And it was a great way to reach out to a lot of people, a lot of college students who would show up. And then, of course, we would we had a way of taking their contact details so that we could follow up with them uh, after the concert. So again, th those were that was again another strategy. And uh, we did uh, uh, as, as a way to follow up with our campus elevates and. Uh, we we started campus groups. So these campus groups were basically like the small groups, like like a, a life group. So they would meet in somebody's house that is close to the campus, or in some cases even in a coffee shop. It'd be a small gathering of uh, you know twelve to fifteen young people, and it was more more like a Bible study, a time of prayer, and so on, much more of a discipling. And these also are working very well, uh, especially uh, in certain parts of the city where we had these groups happening. Uh, this was going very well and uh, a great way to um, uh, reach out to uh, this more of a discipling of the young people. Um, some other things that uh, uh, that could be done, and in some places, especially in Mangalore, uh, uh, these things have been done. Is uh, you know youth events, special meetings, like you're going on a picnic, and so they would go away out on a picnic. They would invite their friends as well, and the youth, you know, they would have a picnic. They would have a, a time together, and of course, they would there would be prayer and ministry as well, or within hostels holding Bible studies. So uh, I'm just. Giving, giving out some ideas, there will definitely be more ideas that you could come up with uh, to think about reaching, you know, a strategies to reach youth between ages 18 to uh, 25. You know, these, these are just some ideas. Let me just pause here and, um, you know, take your thoughts here. Uh, uh, anybody has any additional ideas that you've seen or maybe you've been part of uh, to reach? Uh, 
you know, young people, we're talking about college students, uh, 18 to 25 uh, in urban centers. Any other ideas, any things that you've done or you've seen others do uh, that you think we could add to this list here, yeah? just to share with the class? Thomas, Dave, Siddharth, Conan, hey. Any things you've done or you've seen other, seen do, uh, seen people do to reach uh, college students? Um, so many of us are familiar with uh, Campus Crusade and also with uh, EU, the Evangelical Union. Uh, both these are Christian organizations that uh, primarily work among college students. Uh, they have good ministry happening uh, among college students. So Campus Crusade uh, does a lot of these campus groups. So they would go into um, college campuses, uh, reach students, and you know, do the small groups with the students, uh, reaching them. So that's a good strategy. Um, the EU. Uh, does camps and their camps are very uh, uh, effective. You know, they, mm, and that's where in, in the EU camps, there's been so many numerous testimonies of uh, college students uh, uh, giving their life to Christ, the evangelical union. You know, they would have these camps where uh, friends invite friends uh, and they would go away to the camp a couple of days and uh, they are, they hear the gospel, they hear the messages um, and, uh, and uh, you know, so many young people give their lives to Christ, and then they have a good way to follow up uh, um, with the young people. So, you know, we can learn a lot by observing, uh, you know, these, these uh, organizations that work with college students, how they uh, reach out, you know, both Campus Crusade and Evangelical Union. And I see uh, they've sh shared on the chat about uh, Youth for Christ, you know. Uh, so these are these are good things. And so you know, depending on what you are doing or your local church uh, that you are planting, you can think of you know, if college students are your target or part of your target. And you say, okay, we are, we want to reach college students. Uh, what are some things we can do? Right? Uh, I just said some of the things we've tried and we've done uh, at APC. And there are, of course, other organizations, other ministries that are reaching out to uh, college students. Okay. So, uh, similarly, the next age group that we can think of are, are the uh, the young adults. So um, we we can think of. Uh, so these are people who are in the workplace, right? So they've come out of college. So they are like twenty five plus. Uh, they are in the workplace, they are working, um, they have maybe the first job or maybe the second, you know, this getting started in their career. Uh, and they're also, many of them would be looking at uh, getting married, you know, sometime along the journey. Uh, so that is uh, uh, an important part. And uh, some of them would get married and start their family. They would start having children. So that's that age group that we're looking at. You know, the young adults, they're 25 to 35 age range. And uh, so how can we reach them? How can we meaningfully, you know, uh, reach out to them? Uh, what we have done uh, is, again, we, we use special seminars for for this age group, again, uh, uh, things like preparing for marriage seminar. Um, you know, how do you, what, what the, just the questions that people have in uh, deciding on a life partner. So addressing those kinds of things, uh, uh, life skills, um, you know, uh, because these, these things become very important for the workplace. And so topics that would interest young adults, uh, these professional conferences that we do, again, is very uh, useful for young adults, you know, so they have uh, 
people who are more established in their professional fields come and speak. So it, of course, benefits and attracts and benefits uh, the young adults. Uh, workplace groups, again, has been a very effective approach. Uh, of course, you've got to do this, uh, you know, in a in a careful manner because you cannot use office space without permission. So it's always done with permission, either in uh, if you're using a conference room in the workplace area, you have to do it with uh, permission from the people, or you could do it outside outside of the office space, maybe in a restaurant or a cafe nearby. So these workplace groups have also worked very well. And again, there are ministries that uh, are engaged in reaching uh, people in the workplace. And then home groups also is very important because a lot of these uh, young people are looking for friendships. They look, you know, Many of them have moved new to the city uh, uh, because of the jobs. Uh, and uh, for them to get together with other young people, get together with other young couples, you know, mix, uh, mix uh, is very, very, uh, you know, uh, it's a good opportunity to reach people. So these are some things we've uh, tried and we keep doing, and uh, these things keep going, we keep on doing it. And uh, there are ways to reach young adults. Uh, is there any other things that you, you want to add in terms of this kind of uh, reaching young adults? That means you're talking about people between 25 to 35. Um, they are all starting off in their professional career and they're also, you know, getting married and um, starting off family and so on. Uh, any other thoughts that strategies for young adults? Anyone? Okay. So, Right, so uh, just sharing these thoughts here, and you can think about, you know, um, making use of so, some of these ideas. Now, uh, so they so you have young adults, and then you also have uh, married families. So these are, you know, we're talking about 35 up. Um, and they are now kind of more or less established as families uh, in the city, in the urban center. Uh, what are some of the things that they would need? So a lot, a number of people would love to learn more about marriage and how to strengthen their marriage, how to make the marriage better, so on. So uh, marriage courses are very, very uh, uh, relevant here for this age group. Yeah. Uh, we also do, uh, and we have been, have been doing, you know, parenting and marriage workshops. So again, we're using the seminar strategy uh, but it's really useful, you know, whether it's a marriage marriage workshop or a parenting workshop. So it's a chance for these people in this age group to come to learn, uh, to connect. And of course, we there is a counseling services that are provided. So when people are going through challenges, going through difficulties, and they need some help, they need some guidance. Uh, sometimes it's for themselves. Sometimes it's for their marriage. Sometimes it's for you know, in the parenting side, how do I work with certain challenges with children and so on? So the counseling uh, uh, is available and people reach out for help. And these men and women's conferences also attract uh, people uh, to come when we have certain topics of interest. And similarly for senior citizens, um, people who are at home or in old age homes, you know, to, to, to go visit them, to spend time with them, where they are, they may not be able to, you know, come out too much. Uh, so you need teams of people who would go and visit them and reach out to them. So uh, I'm just quickly, you know, sharing with you that, look, this is how we can develop strategies for people of different age groups. And as a church or as a ministry, depending on where you are, uh, depending on the people around you that you're thinking of reaching, you can develop strategies. And of course, you need to have people who can do those things. You know, so as your congregation is growing, uh, you can engage people. It gives a great means to get church people involved so that they can go out there and reach people uh, in and around uh, you know, the community or in the city, right? And uh, if you do it well, 
uh, it the first time, then when you keep repeating those seminars or workshops or conferences or, you know, uh, people, more people will want to come. They, the news will get go around, hey, this is a good thing to go to. Um, there's a lot of useful, you know, information. There's a lot of value coming through. So, you know, the word will get through. People will want to come. And you can use that as a way to connect people to the church or to the ministry that you are planting. Uh, the second way we develop strategy is when we address specific areas of need, right? Uh, so that means you're looking at uh, either a part of the city or you're looking at uh, a certain group of people in the city and you're asking the question, you know, what are their needs and how can I address those needs in a meaningful way uh, so that uh, through that I can you know present the love of Christ and present the gospel and give them an opportunity to know Christ so you're addressing specific areas of need now again this is not a complete list but just some a few representative things that could be done one is for people who are coming into the city uh, looking for jobs or they may be coming into the city for education and um, to provide them this community uh, that cares for them. You know, so they may have left family uh, in some other part of the country uh, and they, they've come to Bangalore and they come to the city uh, either for education or for work and uh, to be able to reach them and uh, let them know that, look, there's a community that cares and loves. So if you can help with the transition, maybe help in finding jobs, help in finding, uh, um, you know, uh, just uh, especially for students, okay, they need a place to stay, like a paying guest or a hostel. Uh, if you ha can help in that, then it becomes an opportunity to connect with them. And, uh, and from there, you know, you can reach out. So that's something to think about. And, you know, I've, I've seen this happen, especially uh, in, with our Nepali church, who did a lot of this, and they were very good in doing this and taking care of people when they came into the city, either for education or for jobs. Um, some of the other areas that uh, could be addressed, but it does need, you know, it does need specialized uh, kind of help. Uh, so in the case of suicide, in the case of drug addictions, uh, in the case of uh, job seekers, some people can give them some guidance. In the case of um, those who need financial help, uh, who, those who can give guidance, you know. So uh, these are things you can think of. Now, uh, in the case, say, in suicide, drug addictions, we usually guide them to people who can provide that kind of help. Um, in the case of uh, job seeking financial guidance, then you know we we engage church people. Church people are there uh, who can provide that kind of an assistance. Uh, but in some areas, we need to guide them to other organizations that provide that kind of assistance. But these are things that you can think of again here in working with slums and uh, homeless people. Uh, we, we've done some work with slums, but uh, usually there are uh, organizations that focus on it and uh, are able to do a good work in helping people in the slums or homeless people. And, uh, you know, we just back them up. We just help them. Uh, in some cases, we encourage uh, people from the church to go and work with them to address these kinds of needs, right? So uh, the, we can think of this, you know, as the Lord leads and gives you opportunity, you can think of strategies that uh, address areas of need. Uh, a third one would be strategies that address different spheres of activity. Uh, when you're looking at uh, different areas, uh, basically you're talking about education, uh, the area of uh, arts and entertainment, media, business, government, family, religion. You, know, you can have you can develop strategies that uh, that reach people who are in these areas. You know, so for arts and entertainment, I, uh, uh, you know if we are able to, uh, I mean, both uh, two approaches. One is to host events where pe these kind of people come and participate or to send teams to engage 
in, in these things. So uh, our teams from the church have gone and they have, uh, in, in, you know, uh, taken part in uh, uh, art events. So, you know, of course, it's a, it's a event that's open to many, many teams, but then to have a church team go there and do something that's uh, from the church, uh, it's an opportunity to present the message. It's also an opportunity to let people know that the church can be involved in these things and, you know, uh, uh, make an impact. So uh, in, in art, and we've also hosted art events so that people could come, they could invite their friends and come be a part of that event and then ex experience or be exposed to uh, what, you know, what the church has to say in that area. So these kinds of events uh, would be useful in connecting to people uh, in, in this manner, you know, spheres of activity, think about what they are doing and reach out to people in that area. Our uh, Christian Professionals Conference uh, helps people, you know, in the area of business, you know, uh, in that area. So you could invite people, professionals, to come and attend and be a part of uh, those, those events. Okay, so, uh, you know, we, of course, we need skilled people, qualified people to engage in these areas. And as God uh, gives you people in your congregation, uh, you can encourage them to reach out to people and, uh, you know, uh, look at uh, ways you can uh, reach people uh, in those activities. Um, so number four is by making use of tools, whether print, the internet, television, music, and performing arts, and so on. You know, so uh, you we've done quite a lot of this. Like you're putting handbills in the newspapers, and it covers a certain area, so people know you, know, you are there. Your your church is there, or you're having a special event. Uh, you can advertise on social media, Facebook and uh, YouTube, and those kinds of things, promotions. Uh, you can advertise on local cable television. We did this uh, in the early days. We would have scrolling ads, people would call for prayer, um, and we could uh, make those advertisements. And, uh, you know, so use various tools uh, where uh, uh, we can reach people, uh, let them know that you're there. Okay, so let me pause here. So what we've done is this, uh, in, in order to develop strategies to reach people in the, in the city or in, in the area where you're working, uh, I'm just giving you ways by which you can think about strategies. One is by age groups. You know, so you, know, you assess, you know, what are we doing for people in different age groups? What are their needs? How do we address them? Then you can think about special uh, areas of need that you see around you, right? So people around us, what are their needs here? Can we develop strategies to address those needs? Or uh, you can think about activities, businesses, professionals, you know, people are engaged. So you look at, look at that and say, okay, you know, what are things happening around where we are planting the church or doing the ministry? Can we develop uh, a strategy to reach people based on their activities, what they're doing. You know, um, you know, if you're near a, if example is if you're near a sports stadium, hey, there is there are people coming here for athletics and things like that. So, can we do something there that would be tailored for them? You know, and we will be able to reach people in that manner. So, you think about activities. And then lastly, number four is uh, make use of the tools that we have today, uh, especially in urban context. You know, there are many of these tools that we could use, the newspapers, television, social media, so many things. So can we use those tools to get the word out, to access people and uh, let them know that, uh, you know, that the church is there, the church is offering certain services, the church is available to help them and so on. Okay, so I'm just giving you how to think about the strategies and I just talked about a few things that we have done and that people have done. Uh, but you pray and you ask God, God give us strategies. 
know, what are new ways we could reach people? And even even right now, I'm praying, you know, I'm just saying, God, you know, we've, we've gone through this pandemic. Uh, are we going through it? Uh, how do we restart things after this pandemic? You know, um, uh, we're going to get back, let's say slowly, you know, get back to the services and slowly people will maybe, you know, end of the year, next year, people are going to get back to hopefully uh, some sort of normality. But I'm just saying, God, how do we reach people? Like, you know, because a lot of things that we have done the last uh, year and a half or, or almost two years soon have stopped. You know, we can't do those things. And so it's like, uh, okay, uh, we got to, you know, just get back. Uh, how do we get back? Uh, what, how are we going to minister to people? How are we going to reach people? So that's kind of what I'm praying right now. Uh, just trying to understand what God would say and um, to get get new strategies. You know, uh, we are not very sure how and when everything is going to come back. Uh, but then the thing is, we have to continue to reach people. How do we do it? What would be the new, uh, you know, areas of need that we have to be speaking to? Uh, what are what are people going to be thinking about, you know? And uh, how do we address that? How do you know? I'm talking about thinking about our city in that context. You know, how do we reach? How do we address people in our city? You know, what what people in our city? What are they facing? What are they thinking about? So right now, I'm just kind of praying about those things. You know, pray, just waiting on God. Uh, and then he will give us ideas. Okay, these are the things you need to start doing. And uh, and uh, and and you know, you, it's good that you know you start early, so then you can prepare and position yourself, get ready, you know, to carry out those strategies. When things open up and the opportunities open up, you should be ready and uh, to go out there and serve people, reach people, uh, and things that God has put in your heart. Okay, so. I know that uh, you know we have all gone through quite uncertain times. Uh, ministry was not, has not been the way it used to be. There are challenges, but uh, what I want to just leave with us is um, let's start praying and seeking God for strategies that we can use as things as we progress, as we move into, you know, the things that happen before us. And then God will give us ideas. He'll say, get ready for this. So prepare yourself for this. Uh, this is how we're going to be able to reach people, you know, as things begin to open up and people start moving about. and you're, you have, you're able to connect. This is, how, this is what you should be doing. These are the needs that you need to be addressing. So God will give you those ideas and then you will be, you know, if you and I prepare ahead of time, We'll be there to uh, reach people. Okay, so we're going to pause here, and uh, next week we will talk about the seven mountain assignment, which kind of builds on what we were talking today on. You know, how do we target those areas of activities, and how do we prepare the church to do that, especially in an urban context? Uh, it becomes very important in an urban context because um, the church should reach people across these seven spheres of society. So we'll talk some practical things that uh, we can do uh, to prepare the church, the church plant. So you're, you've got a few people, how do you prepare them to reach uh, the seven spheres of influence? Okay, uh, any questions? I know I've spoken a lot, any thoughts, any questions you want to share or ask? No questions. I don't see anything in the chat. Okay, y'all fine. Thomas, go ahead. You are saying something. As to what uh, we had discussed today, uh, for me, uh, it's a new church one, one uh, two years ago. So, so many things that is there to take to learn. And mm -hmm. what you said about the 
no adults and the youngsters how how we can reach these are uh, uh, i can take and i can apply this i can see the results so mm. i don't have any questions just i'm taking and learning the things mm. okay Thank good you good good yeah just to you know stimulate your thinking and then definitely as you go forward god will give you ideas for these different age groups and uh, you can make use of it very good anybody else any thoughts any comments okay all right so let's pause here for today uh, we close in prayer and um, um next week we will talk about seven mountain assignment and uh, kind of move forward from there okay all right so um, yeah who wants to close in prayer maybe dave would you like to close in prayer we will dismiss after that okay thank you so heavenly father we thank you for today we thank you for the lesson that we learned lord jesus we thank you for this opportunity and this timing again lord jesus and we come before you and uh everything that we learned today lord jesus let help each one of us to uh, keep it in our heart and let all these things be something that can help us in our future or mm-hmm. help us in the present lord jesus uh we ask your spirit to uh, uh take us through every situation every uh, transition of our life lord jesus we mm-hmm. thank you for this day and we, we bless the rest of the day in the mighty name of jesus i pray amen 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 okay thank you everyone thank you for being on the class today i'll see you again so god bless but- God bless by now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.